Cyberspace, welcome to the Bigfoot News for today's date, March 22nd, 2024. I'm your host, your guy, the Squatch Detective Steve Calls, along with my co-host right down there. Steve, how you doing, bud? I am, well, I'm hanging in there. Want to know about that neck. Is that neck still uh, an issue here? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay. Unfortunately, yes, it is. Hang in there, man. It'll, it'll get there. It'll get I had my good days and bad days. I had a really, uh, I had a really good Monday. Yeah. Uh, I had a good Sunday. I had a good weekend, really. And then uh, Monday I went, and then Tuesday morning it was like, oh, you know. oh yeah. Well, and, that's the uh, thing. A, a nice, a nice hot soak in the bathtub of hot, extremely hot water for yeah. about an hour is great. About the time your yeah. your, your fingers get all squiggly looking, there, <laughs> that, that makes it really feel better for a little while. You got like yeah. fifteen minutes of, ah, and then after that, there it comes yep. right back. Yep. But just hang in there, man. It's, it's been yeah. Nice here. We've yeah. had we've had great weather. It's been really nice weather to get out, and I haven't got out this week because my team is uh, in revolt. They're they're having a revolution, but that's okay because uh, you know we have a uh, not really a democracy here, but uh, more like the uh, authoritarian system. So tomorrow we're all going out. <laughs> Regardless how sore everybody is, we're going out tomorrow again. Well, I got to say, overnight, I'm looking at four to eight inches of snow. Oh, man. Dude, we've had like 60s we're, and 70s. We're getting I socked. Love right, it. right now, it's 31 degrees. Well, the, the first day of spring was yesterday. I think it was 21st of March, the first day of spring. Yeah, Mother Nature has given us the bird. Well, okay. So the groundhog lied. Uh, yeah, York, yeah pretty, you know. pretty much. Yeah, which well, is very, uh, very common. Yeah. Well, you know, I got to give him credit. He he picked it for this one because it, it's been really nice. Uh, you know, even the first day of spring yesterday was nice. But uh, we'll see. You never know. Yeah. I have seen it snow on Easter in Kentucky. So who knows? Oh. Who knows? <laughs> That's right. There. Um. On the. Uh, I'm gonna double check something real quick now that now that you mention it. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, Easter's coming up next Sunday. It's it's actually Easter Sunday is in March this time. Uh, I think according um, to Google, I gotta check my calendar here. Mm -hmm. Well, that's interesting. Mm. I have a book. I have the show booked. For Easter Sunday. Ah, speaking of books. Oh no, no, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I excuse me. Completely wrong. Whoa, 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 whoa. Uh, I, I do have the show book for this Sunday, Easter Sunday. There's no show. Okay. Okay. Yeah. That's what I had well, a look at. Easter well, Sunday since, is March 31st. Since you brought up book, uh, I, I want to tell you, you know, I'm 105 pages into your book. And oh, very I'm good. really, really liking it. And uh, you know, first of all. The way I read a book, you know, I, I thought I was going to read about 20, 20 pages or 25 pages a day. And that gives me time. That's my per personal preference of way to read. It gives me time to absorb and, uh, you know, think about the information that I've read. And then I'll go on to uh, read another, you know, 20, 25 pages the next day. Well, when I picked yours up, like the first day I was 50 pages in. I was like, I wanted to put it put it down, you know, or, or you know, I, of course I'm reading the PDF form and I wanted to stop, but it just kept on going. I was like, this is not really a good place to stop. I'm just going to keep on going. <laughs> and, uh, we, when I got up to 50, I said, that's it. I got to stop. I got to stop. But, uh, yeah, I'm up to 105 now and, and you know, I'm enjoying it. It's good stuff. Uh, 
course, you know, with me and you, we talk a lot, you know, both, you know, online and offline. Yeah. And a lot of the stuff is familiar to me. But I tell you what, so far, you did go a little bit, ooh, when you're talking about the, when you start identifying the segments of the brain and what each does. And that's, that's, that's really good. I'm going to, uh, it's going to force me, unfortunately, to have to increase my knowledge on uh, human anatomy a little bit. <laughs> and, I, and I knew I threw a few stories in there that you've That's never heard thing. before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I've been I've been enjoying those. The, uh, the details about investigations of certain or certain investigations that I hadn't heard. Yeah, Th those are great. I'm enjoying those, including some real world investigations. That yeah, yeah. Right. I'm going to get back into it. You know, I don't know if I'll be able to read any tomorrow or not, depending on yeah. many miles we hike. <laughs> okay. Thought I'm yeah. in there. Shall we do the uh, roll call? Roll call. Let's see who we got in here. First in today, wow. Lester Taylor. Lester, welcome. The chat room champion. Okay, we got mm. Walter Kroll. Said, damn, Lester, nicely done. Uh, Relic Common, who will be checking us out tomorrow. We have Ammon Chris. We appreciate you, Relic. Don Gumow Jr., yes. Tennessee Cherokee. Uh, Hello, Ristol. Cherokee. Good to see you. Helton, Ristol. a.k.a. Fester Man. Max Powers, Bigfoot Hunter. Good to see you, Max. Max, welcome. I mean, apparently, he's out uh, in his tent. <laughs> so, hello. and oh, cool. uh, <laughs> Keep dry, Max. Um wow. Uh, we got Jay Fritz. Hello, Jay. Good to see you. Hey. Uh, Martin Stiltz. Good to see you as well. Martin, welcome. Jeff D. Smith. Good to see you, Jeff D. Jen, Jeff hello D. there. How are you? Arthur yeah. Watch. Good to see you as well. Farron, what's up? Smedley do right. Smedley. And Brian and Chewy go hiking. Hello, Brian. Give Brian. Chewy a pat on the head. Give him an extra yes. treat for us. That's right. Bacon treat. Bacon treat. <laughs> oh, I can't say that too loud. Bacon. I'll wake my dog up over here. The, the uh, office assistant is in his chair, you know, taking a snooze. There's Bill finding a trackway. Good to see you. Yeah. Uh, Angel Nolan. Hello, Angel. Angel? Hello. Welcome. I think we're up. Sa Nikki's out there. Sasquatch Seekers. Hey, Good to see you, Nikki. All right. I think we got everybody. All right. Welcome, everybody. It's good to see you. So where should we start today with our Bigfoot news? How about how about uh, this BFOR article uh, that was written uh, by the Centralia Washington Chronicle uh, yeah. by Brendan, Brandon Hansen? Yeah. That's um, a good one. You want me to yeah. take that one, Steve, or are you going to do that? Uh, I'll tell you why. I'll start the uh, point up until where you started off with the investigation point. Okay. All right. All right. So uh, the Bigfoot Re uh, Field Researchers Organization reported and investigated a recent sighting of a Sasquatch-like creature in north of Centralia, Washington. According to the witness who was riding motorcycles with his friend on February 4th, the group spotted something running across a ridgetop about a half mile away. It was very large and human shaped, the witness report reported to the BFRO. There was one color, tan brown, moving across very rugged terrain, making a beeline for the tree line. Hey, that rhymes, making a beeline for the tree line. Oh, tree line. Beeline for the tree line. Beeline. Um, the three of them watched the figure for 30 seconds before it went out of sight. It moved so fluently with little arm movement, unlike a human running, said the witness. It easily was 10 feet tall for us to be able to see it from so far away. Uh, the witness reported it, the sighting to the BFRO on February 8th. That was only four days after he had the sighting. So why don't you pick it up with the uh, investigation? Cool. Uh, BFRO investigator Scott Taylor followed up with an investigation of his own. Taylor said that the area is well known for Bigfoot sightings and seems to be a travel corridor between the Capitol Forest in the Bald Hill area. Oh, hang on a second. Washington State. Yeah, that's a pretty hot area. Yeah. All right, we're a little out of order with the slideshow today because <laughs> that's, it, that's the right one, though. That's that it. is. Okay. Based on the descriptions of the way this creature walked and its speed across the terrain, 
I believe that these three witnesses were fortunate to see a Sasquatch, Taylor noted. Another investigator, Matt Moneymaker, hey, Matt, always talked, also, excuse me, not always, also talked with a witness at length. Moneymaker noted that Beaster's hobby is motorcycle trail riding, which has allowed him to explore a lot of black country. He, he has observed large animals and humans near and far while riding around the hills for over the years, Moneymaker said. This figure was observed half mile distance, but with an unobstructed view as it moved along out in the open. Both he and his riding companion were certain they were watching something that was upright and roughly 10 feet tall. Now that's a big old boy. Uh, Moneymaker said if the figure was human, the witness and his friend would have figured that out. The figure they saw was simply too big to be a human, he said. The investigator points out that wildlife naturally transits between the mountains of the Olympic Peninsula and and the and then the Cascade Mountains. This is the first Sasquatch sighting listed for Lewis County on the BFR website since December 2023. And it says for more info about the BFRO, go to BFRO.net. And of course, I think we all, everybody watching pretty much knows where that's at. But uh, yeah, another big sighting in uh, Washington State, which is a hotbed, a hotbed for Bigfoot activity. And let me see this. Well, you know, I've always said that, you know, (laughs) even though we described it as 10 feet tall, right? at that distance, uh, according to this, it's about a half mile distance. He saw this thing. You know, What's two feet and a half mile? Yeah. So it could be eight feet, could be 10 Mm. feet, could even be 12 feet. Yeah. You know, we won't really know unless. uh, Difficult to judge. Right. Difficult to judge height at that distance. But it looks like a pretty good area. Get in your chair. Get in your chair. All right. Now, notice at the top, they marked a power line route, which I'm assuming is a cut, power line cut through the forest. Those are always uh, reported to have activity, you know, a good good place to search for activity. So it's interesting. I mean, I love Washington State. I've, I've been there a couple times, but I've never been out bigfooting there, you know, out in the wilderness. But just driving by all those mountains and, and hills and trees is beautiful. I love it. Yeah. Uh, Bill says he either needs longer arms or better reading glasses. <laughs> yeah, that that really isn't up there for for necessarily reading. Yeah. Well, I was I was lucky, Bill, because I I could I could blow it up where I could see it, but it's like wow. Uh, yeah. Normally, I have to drag out the uh, the reading glasses for small print. There we go. Now exit full screen. There we go. Just <laughs> recently have figured out how to do that. By yeah, well, I'd say it's a very interesting sighting. Sounds credible yeah. enough. It wasn't anything amazing going on. It was just right. like a fleeting glimpse. Yeah. Um, thirty seconds. That's a pretty good time. Time, you know, uh, better than average. Better than your roadside crossing where it's done in like five seconds. Up oh, there yeah. goes. Yeah. Oop, there it goes. Yeah. Um, so anyway, well, that, they had a little time to observe it and observe yeah. its speed and stuff, but. Right. I'm and, surprised and, they didn't note anything about the speed. Of course, I've not looked at the BFRO report yet. Yeah. And, and then again, too, the other the other kicker is as well is that uh, even at that distance, you kind of and that time with that time, which if it's about a half mile away, that does kind of make a lot of difference. To it gives you that perspective for a while. Like, what am I looking at? Gives your time to your brain to go, wait a minute, that's, that's walking upright and, and right. it's moving fast. And, and it's gotta be about 10 feet tall. You know, it's, you know, pretty large. It's very large. So. Yeah. You don't go into that. Uh, <gasps> it's 10 feet away from me thing to where yeah. you got the, the fire right. flight you know, right. reactions messing with your mind. So yeah, I, I thought it was an interesting sighting and, you know, new, that's good. <laughs> Something fresh. And, All right. On to the next story. Mm. All right. 
you know, I'm having a very weird day. I'm having a hand cramp all day long. Ever get those? Nerve pain? No, it's just nerve uh, hand cramp. Uh, I've gotten those before. It just yeah. So, well, uh, keep an eye on it. <laughs> see, Jeff was trying to get the skinny on our on our headlining story for the evening. And uh, I was like, ah, you got to watch the show. So he checked his butt here. Hello, Jeffrey. Welcome, Jeff. Good to see you, Jeffrey. Appreciate it. Come on now. Do I look like the kind of father that would spoil a Christmas Day present? No. <laughs> oh, man. Yes. By, by the way, we're having a surprise birthday party for you tomorrow, Chris. No, I'm just kidding. Oh, surprising. <laughs> yeah. You know, you know why you're surprised? Because it's not your birthday. <laughs> Oh, 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 hey, it's, speaking of birthdays, Henry May's birthday is coming. Oh, I wrote this down. Hang on. Tuesday, March 26th is Henry May's birthday coming up. So if you guys haven't wished Henry happy birthday, you know, go over there to his channel. Check him out on uh, HBM's Crypto Corner, Henry May's channel on YouTube. And uh, Henry still does, uh, oh, Henry's going to be 54. 54, buddy. And uh, anyway, uh, Henry does, uh, he does a Sasquatch experience with Sean Forker. Still great show. And uh, he also does HBM's Crypto Corner. You know, usually, you know, once or twice a week, depending, I guess, depending on how, you know, what he comes up with and how he feels. But uh, great stuff. You know, always get over and support Henry. Yep. He is our walking and, encyclopedia of big fun. Well, we're, we're going to get on Henry real soon, but uh, I got another announcement on yeah. April 14th. We're going to have the great Tom Steenberg back on. Oh, wow. Good. Good. That's great. He is a very, very valid researcher. I really enjoy his work. I don't know, Jen, about adding adding uh, height during stress. I know I gain a lot of weight when, I, when I'm under a lot of stress. <laughs> stress eating. Yeah. Well, I add weight when I, I'm stressed. Um. Uh, you know, my God, that entire pizza looks good. <laughs> hey, man, um, I can I can make it rough on a large pizza. I mean, I can I can do a number at least for me. Half of a large pizza is you know okay, that's a good enough for me. If I really wanted to, I could take out a large pizza no problem single handedly. Yeah. I I decimated a pizza or two in my day. <laughs> I remember. Uh, and and not not to get off topic, but I remember uh, like the first time I was being left home alone. I think I was like fourteen, yeah. and we, you know, we, like five houses down from where I lived, there was a pizza place. So my father left me money. Go get yourself a pizza. There's you know, sewed in the fridge. Yeah. So I went down there, got myself a pizza, walked it home. They came back, and they saw the pizza box sitting, you know, on the kitchen table. They opened it up; it was completely gone. <laughs> <laughs> and ran 14 and an entire pizza. Yeah, yeah of course. That's, that's good. Well, that was back in the days when parents could leave their children at home alone and didn't have to worry about coming home to uh, a pile of ashes and dead, a dead child, you know, uh, back in the, ago, the old Generation X days where uh, children were actually allowed to raise themselves partially. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, you know, I, it was like I went out. I, I would go out like at nine o'clock in the morning, play ball or would do whatever. Right. I, I uh, dinner time had to be in by five o'clock. So at you know, four forty five I walked in the door, had dinner, I was back out at six, and I, I would come in at my curfew, which is either eight or nine o'clock at night, yeah, that's depending it. on my age. Yeah. Go out early. I would get up early in the morning and my parents didn't hey, see me. Yeah. Buttworms like, lurking. Oh, <laughs> Welcome. <laughs> I'd check in, you know, at, at, at dinner time, or yep. as we call it in Kentucky, supper time. Yep. And uh, that's it. Oh, that's another thing. Next week, mm. next week, I'm doing the seminar on the Miller Doc. Yeah. Yeah. So doing that, that. I read Miller. through that one. That was part of the, in the yeah, it's covered. It's good, really good. Yep. Okay. Next story. This is. <clears throat> This sighting comes from uh, Columbia, Missouri, near Columbia, Missouri. And let me uh, adjust the slideshow. Big Mo. So, yeah, this one came from uh, 100.9 The Eagle. 
uh, and and this was the uh, the story written by the DJ there. I've heard many, my share of Missouri Bigfoot stories, but never one quite like this. A Missouri man claims he had one of these mythical creatures drawn to him, possibly because of awesome music he was playing on his car stereo. I understand the possibility that you're going to laugh at the story and I'm that I'm about to share with you, but the Missouri man involved in this close encounter of the cryptid kind uh, kind really does have an interesting story about how his most excellent classic rock songs may have been responsible. A man named Gary from Columbia, Missouri shared this crazy crazy encounter with the YouTube channel Sasquatch Theory, and it's a doozy. It happened on the east of Columbia off Route Z. That's located approximately here, and there's the map where it's approximately located. Um, here's what Gary described about his Missouri encounter. My wife was working. I couldn't sit in the parking. I wouldn't sit in the parking lot. I would sit off the side of the road, sit down there, and listen to my music. I've listened to it pretty loud. I'm still a child of the '80s. Yeah, um, I'm listening to I'm listening to music. I had my passenger side window down. And I start hearing that talk again, perhaps 20 to 30 yards away. It was when Gary looked in his rearview mirror that he knew something was wrong. It got really close, probably within 20 to 25 feet. I could still hear the talking going on. I got this overfeel, uh, overwhelming feeling of calm, too calm. I looked down to my driver's side mirror and I swear that there was somebody six to six and a half feet tall, kind of bulky, but nothing huge. That's the talking stopped. Turned on my headlights and it was all black. Gary still thought it might be a person, but the talking he heard was not human. The next night, Gary had another encounter in the same place with the same thing. Around 9 30, 10 o'clock at night, I'm sitting there listening to ZZ Top, ACDC. I paused to pick the next song when a tree came crashing down with ungodly force. Fortunately, Gary was not hit by the tree, but he but he headed out because he did not want to meet whatever. It was that shoved down that tree, uh, you know, and then he goes on to recommend you listening to the interview on Sasquatch theory. I believe he's sincere about what he thinks he experienced, but you be the judge. Oh, and it might be, you might want to be careful where you listen to your awesome tunes from now on. So <laughs> I'm going to check that out. It's on the YouTube channel. Sasquatch theory. Yep. Sasquatch theory. I'm going to go check that out. That's interesting. Interesting story. It doesn't sound like you know. It's it doesn't sound like an unbelievable you know encounter. It sounds like I'm just sitting there listening to his music and something. Well, yeah. I, I mean, again, um, again, it's uh, one of those stories that's not too flamboyant. Right. Oh, I saw yeah. it there, and its fangs were dripping and yada yeah. yada and all bullshit. Yeah. yeah. Um, you know, so. It's not exactly a life and death, a life or death. Yeah, I, 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 I couldn't tell you, uh, Trackway, uh, talking or mumbling. I'm only reading what the article stated. So, yeah, um, yeah, that was a valid. That was a valid point. Yeah, that, what kind of what were we talking about? This talking stuff, or were we right. talking about the the scene? And, 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 and unfortunately, we do not know the guy's last name. The previous witness on the BFRO. Um, I, I will say this: that the article, I think, inadvertently put the witness's name out on the, on the report. And that had been since retracted. So when I wrote this originally, I had to double check and, and make sure I had to edit my own script here uh, to make sure I wasn't saying the, uh, the two witnesses names. Cause I have both the witnesses names. Walter Kroll says Bigfoot is an eighties mm -hmm. fan. Me too. Walter. Yep. Uh, do you think listening to wham would make Bigfoot would not Carter? <laughs> Wait, 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 wait. Oh, that's terrible, Steve. That's terrible. Did, did, did he just say that? Now comes the part where we throw our heads back and laugh. Ready? Ready! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he said that. Finding <laughs> the trackway. Oh, that was that was beautiful. Excellent. Uh, well, at least it wasn't know. a platypus joke. <laughs> you guys are killing me. That's why. I, it's hard for me while we're doing the show. It's hard for me to look over, and you know, I do have to scan the chat to make sure it's if anybody's asking a question or something. But it's hard for me to concentrate because these guys in the chat always kill me. I mean, it, it's hilarious. Uh, well, thank y'all so much. We appreciate y'all so much. Bigfoot's 80s fan. 
wham, I'm going to make him wood dunk. <laughs> so, who knows? Uh, you know, playing loud music didn't attract a Bigfoot. I mean, we've talked a lot of times on this channel and, and over on the other podcast about yeah. primate curiosity. So, right. sure. So, yeah, that's, anyway. that's, that's one of the good, that's the one of the, the, the techniques is to make them curious about you. So they'll come and see, well, yep. what the heck is this guy doing? What is this? And the second time he threw a tree down. So apparently he didn't like uh, whoever he was playing that night. Maybe. Maybe. You know, uh, he's listening to, you know, ACDC, ZZ Top, yeah. maybe Twisted Sister. Yeah. Uh, and, maybe a yeah. share song came on the radio. <laughs> and, and maybe he sh maybe instead he should have been listening to Rush or the Scorpions or, yeah. uh, or you know, whoever, or maybe Panthera. Yeah, that's what I would be listening to. Need some need some kiss on that radio. Yeah, that's yep. what it was. Well, that's that's actually very early eighties, maybe even mm. mostly seventies. Truthfully, because uh, I I, I remember stuff. kiss. Oh yeah, they had some they good stuff. Took off the makeup. They still had some pretty good stuff. Uh, well, very good one. Yes, yes. What happened was it went from the ZC Top song and it went to Barry Manilow and he pushed the. I may I the songs that make the whole world stink. Anyway, um, mm -hmm. all right, enough of that story. Another one bites the dust. All right. My face is hurting now. Okay. You know what? Biscardi's mm. face has been killing me for years. <laughs> oh. Well, I mean, you know, we do this, you know, we have fun. We present the, the news, whatever is available, of course, but we have fun doing this, and that that's really important to me. That's what makes this show fun. It's because we, we make else, light we, of what we've had a good time, right? You right. Know, no matter what, we've had a good time. And, uh, and trust me, we we have we always try to put a few lighthearted articles into it, yeah. and we always have one serious article, and we're keeping that one for last tonight. Of course, the serious one is last. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. That's going right. for last. So, uh, where are we? Lester says, uh, I think, I would think Bigfoot is more of a Johnny Horton fan. North to Alaska. I don't know who Johnny Horton is, Lester. I, I don't. <laughs> oh, man. Okay. This one comes from Coast to Coast AM with George Norrie. A hunt for the elusive hairy being called Sasquatch is planned for a heavily wooded area in Athens, Georgia. The athens Clark County Leisure, Sur uh, Leisure Services Department is hosting Sasquatch Adventure from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. this Saturday. The program is for those 10 and older, but children must be accompanied by an adult. Poor adults. Um, previously, this group, led by a highly trained government staff, We'll search for the animal signs, evaluate habitat, experiment with calls and other techniques in search of Sasquatch. The park services reported. Yeah, I'm sure it looks like it's a fun kids event. What's the matter? Government staff, a lot of smoke coming up there, Steve, from something. That's not okay. sure what that is. Yeah. <laughs> uh, trained government staff in tracking. Well, no, just a trained government staff. You know, they're, ha they're having fun. They're having fun with it. Yeah. So uh, the one thing I can say, hopefully this isn't, you know, since it's Georgia, hopefully it's not guided by Rick Dyer. <laughs> the world's best big butt tracker. Yeah, okay. Whatever, dude. Uh, I, it's, I don't think Dyer, <laughs> does he still live in Georgia? I thought he'd like moved to Texas or something. No, he's, I believe he yeah, is in he Arkansas. Right mm. he, he's all over the place. He's in Arkansas. He's in Texas. He's in Florida. He's in Georgia. I mean, since Georgia, he went from Georgia to Florida, Florida, Arkansas, Arkansas to Texas, Texas to Nevada. Now he's back, went back to Florida, and then now he went back to Arkansas. A rolling Stone gathers no moss. Yeah. Enough. <laughs> Never mind. I'm not. I'm not going to say anything derogatory. No. No. Yep. Uh, would, would it make you mad if I said that I would just? Currently, eagerly awaiting his next hoax. Yeah, it would. Because I'm sure it's in the works. I'm sure it is. I'm just waiting. You know, come on, come on, let's have it. Let's have it. Yeah. Okay. 
So if people are looking for a, a great thing, I, I'm going, I, you know, I promised Eric, I would, I would advertise the camping adventure. So if you're looking for a real Bigfoot adventure, check this out. <sighs> Okay, we're back. September 6th and 7th. Yes, sir. going to be a good time. Hopefully, I won't be in a wheelchair by then. Don't do something silly while you're hurt. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. All right. Finally, we're going to get into our last uh, story. Uh, Chris, you have that one up? Uh, yeah. That's your bad boy. Bill Bean, the spiritual warrior. Okay. Uh, this one comes from. Uh, it's Don't, a piece give me by a David. Don't give me a Snapple. Don't give me a Snapple. Don't give me a Snapple. It's, it's a piece done by David Peskovitz, and uh, the, it's, it's from Boing Boing. Weird, weird, weird. Bigfoot is an unholy hybrid of fallen angels, humans, and apes, says Reverend slash Exorcist. Here we go. Maryland Reverend Bill Bean is a world-renowned exorcist, spiritual deliverance minister, and is known as the Spiritual Warrior, according to his website. The Daily Star... The Daily Star and there it, there it is. The Daily Star reports that Bean has solved the mystery of Bigfoot, and while, sorry, need my glasses, and while they, they aren't extraterrestrial as others have argued, they do have a UFO connection. Okay. Reverend Bean says he believes he believes unidentified flying objects could could be divine Merkaba chariots. Poop now, everywhere. Poop. Vehicles he claims carried Satan and a third of the angels down to earth. Satan? Satan. After remember they remember Dana Carvey doing Church Lady? Yes. yes. Mm. Oh no, could it be Satan? Could Bigfoot be mm, Satan? <laughs> this, is, this is a tough one to get. You should have took it. You should have taken this one. This is tough to get through. Uh, they came down here and they took human women produced a hybrid offspring of giants called the Nephilim. Dun, the, dun, dun. Yeah. the Nephilim went into the fields and the forests and had unnatural sex acts with apes, bears, wolves, dogs, monkeys, you name it. And that is the Bigfoot Sasquatch creatures. So Nephilim things that uh, came down and had they, they did certain um, acts with apes, bears, wolves, dogs, and monkeys. Uh, you get this? Okay, so uh, all right, moving on. I suppose Bean does have credibility when it comes to, to such matters, given his own supernatural experiences living in a haunted house where he suffered psych physical, excuse me. Sorry. That was a Freudian slip where, right there. Where he suffered physical demonic attacks between the ages of five and twelve. I got through that. I can't believe it. Uh yeah, this guy, you know, not only uh 
as he got it all figured out, he was actually, you know, attacked between the ages of five and 12 physically by demons. <laughs> oh, Steve. Uh, that that story got you, didn't it? Get you a drink, man. Get you a drink. It sure well, did. I'm drink. the one that had to read it. I mean, I'm just, <laughs> I had to read through this uh, cliffering slough well, or whatever it is. Fluttering so, cliff. Here's the thing. Um, you know, uh, UFO hunting exorcist. Yeah. Okay. Oh, whoa. Nikki. Uh oh, Nikki has. Thank you, Nikki. She has thank called. You. She has called for Ralph. Thank you. Hey, Nikki. Ralph. Hang on. Let's. Hello, calling Ralph. Ralph, what do you think of this guy's opinion right now? I can't stop it. I concur. Okay, so let's get serious for a minute here. Um, With this one? Yeah, absolutely. Okay, all right. And the reason, and the reason why is for those who are not familiar with the paral, paranormal world, which I, I, I do. You know, there was a period of time I was a paranormal investigator. And for those that don't know, for those that don't know, I was a demonologist. I'm an ordained minister. I got ordained. Uh, I had the support of an old Holy Catholic uh, priest. And I was a demonologist. Uh, this gentleman, Bill Bean, is a demonologist as well. He doesn't say the term, but that's exactly how he's acting. He talks about, uh, he's calling himself an exorcist. Well, that's what a demonologist does. And... The reason why people don't know that I did this is because I don't do it for the FaceTime that he apparently is doing this for. As you can see on the slideshow, he's got a website and he's talking, you know, talking about this. And um, I'm sorry, I, I could never do that for any remunerance at all. I, I was there strictly to help people. Right. And and due to an event that occurred back in, I want to say 2018, mm -hmm. uh, maybe even 20, uh, 2019, 2019, early 2019, I have kind of stepped out of it. So do I, uh, do I believe there are certain aspects of that that are true? Yes. So I, I don't think it's all crazy. Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, there is a lot of, uh, you know, uh, fluff that they put into the articles and that may be as a result of journalism, yeah. you know, oh, he had, you know, a, 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 you know, uh, for example, you know, he battled demonic forces when he was a child and yada, yada, yada. No, he probably had some, some experiences, some very negative experiences, yeah. which can happen to anybody. Um, if, if you subscribe to that sort of stuff. But you see, here, here's the, the, the difference. The difference is, the difference is, is um, I, I know where, th where the lines are drawn on it. And certain people, and I look at that, and, and Chris, you're understanding where I'm coming from because you yes. started to read the book. I know exactly where you're coming from. So you have people like M.K. Davis. You have people like Bill Bean. You have people uh, that, that, you know, like, for example, M.K. Davis, very dedicated to the Patterson film. But he took it one step too far. He started to think in it too much. And I think it's the same thing with this gentleman here is that, you know, he's probably got a lot of right points and had a lot of real experiences. But he's just taking it too far now. Well, yeah, I yep. think there's so, also there's a different there's a difference between what you were doing and what this gentleman is is doing. Um, and I'll tell you what I think it is. I think it's all related to this. Yeah, I, I don't know. Uh, yeah. Money. Like I said, in the paranormal side of things, he was he was very well revered. 
So that's why this becomes serious to me. Yeah. Is because what'll end up happening is he may influence other people on that side to believe they are Nephilim when all that is in. <laughs> yeah, I agree, Mick. Um, um, it's a fluff piece is what it is, you know, and, and you got to understand what I am seeing is especially a lot of these littler, um, these literal news websites like the daily star, the Irish star, um, you know, they, they have very little to report on it on a slow news day. Hey, why not pick up this story? It's weird. And we'll make a nice fluff beef and make it interesting and get people to come back and get more. Yeah, it, it caught the Bigfoot crawler but on the way. I, I really don't. Um, I, I really, really bothered by it, and uh, and the reason why is because for people who don't know, and Chris, we haven't gotten to the end of the book, right? Uh, but the end of the book, I kind of challenge people to put their foot down against stuff like this. No, no, Mick. Actually, uh, you said National Enquirer story. Not really, because there's truth. Bill Bean actually is a real guy. Actually, right. did what you know has experience. Well, it claims to experience what they're saying he claimed to experience. Um, there was nothing in there that was untrue. So you know, there was nothing there that was exaggerated. That that's Bill Bean's story. And uh, uh, Eric Altman used to do. <clears throat> Uh, he used to do a show that, that not only covered Bigfoot, but it covered UFOs and uh, other cryptids and the paranormal. And he, uh, one of his frequent guests was Bill Bean. So, um, you know, <clears throat> but to me, it becomes so much more important because Bean is a, an influencer in his own right in certain, you know, certain pockets of say the uh, research of the strange and unusual. Well, Mick, when I'm saying nothing untrue, absolutely. Did Bill Bean claim to experience that stuff? Absolutely. Does he have a website? Absolutely. Does he? I mean, these are shots off his website, not off the article yeah. that, that you're looking at. Yeah. Um, I just put the Daily Star because that's where the article came from. Um, has he claimed this stuff all? You know, does he believe that Bigfoot or Nephilim? Yes, he does. So there's nothing untrue in the article. He's not saying that this stuff really does exist. Not, not the journalist. He's just saying that Bill Bean says that this is what this is. And, and, and is a 100% accurate representation of what Bean is saying. So well, He's not the first one to suggest this either. I think we article, mm -hmm. understand the article in its context. That yeah, he's, the, he's the journalist the, wasn't saying this is the truth. He was saying this is what Bill is saying. It's my thought that he's been reading through um, some of Melba Ketchum's old blog. Chris, you're muted. Oh. How about now? Uh-oh, my ear might shut down. You might have to wiggle that wire. Be right back. All right. Uh, technical difficulty. See, it's the it's the demons. Uh oh! If you can't hear Kristen, what the hell's going on with my audio? Okay, and can you hear me now? All right, Chris. Apparently, the problem is not with you. The fans are hearing you. I can't hear you. I don't know what's going on. I'm gonna I'm gonna come back out and come back in. Okay. Well, we'll try switching out a little bit. Yeah. Normally, uh, yeah. Normally, when I just go out and come back in, if there's any problem, it's usually gone. Whoa. <laughs> I don't know how I got that big, but uh, I, I apologize to all the folks at home because I have a face for radio. But uh, but I think this guy, this. Uh, had already had just been over to what's her name? So uh, Melba Ketchum's blog and had been reading stuff about Nephilim and stuff like that. 
which you know, and I'm sure there's probably a place for an argument like that, but that's one of those uh, I don't know what you'd call it, uh, one of those debates like the UFOs and stuff like that that's just not not tied to Bigfoot, in my opinion. Yeah, Walter. <laughs> yeah, it's a Chris Bennett show. Yeah, well, it's temporarily until Steve gets back. But the. Uh, uh, Chris did want, oh, let me get some of these comments. Finding the trackway says Chris did just did want to be seen laughing at my platypus joke on screen. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And Smelly D writes Demons testing Chris. Maybe. Maybe. But uh, you know, that that's another another mystery that, you know, I'm not it's not really related. Now I like I like mystery. Don't get me wrong. I mean, I'm not I'm sure like a lot of you guys. We'll uh, watch uh, uh, you know, stuff like paranormal shows and uh, you know the ghost shows and and UFO documentaries. I like that stuff. That's all fine. But is it related to Bigfoot? I don't know. I don't see any evidence. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, why do I make myself smaller? Uh, let's see. I'm going to click some buttons here. See what. Oh, there we go. That's better. That's better. That's a little better. Let's see. No, no, that didn't work. Okay. Hey, that's better. That's better. Okay. And my camera is not too great either. I think it looks better. I look better from afar than close up. But, uh, <laughs> let's see. I'm going to check out some of these. Mick says, Chris, I raised my glass and I toast you for getting through that story. Well, Mick, it wasn't easy. Uh, that's a, that's, it's, it was a tough one. Uh, let's see. <laughs> All right. Mick says, there's only one thing that can kill a Nephilim. That's my ex-wife's meatloaf. Okay. <laughs> Steve, where you at, man? Let me look, guys. Hang on. Oh, okay. Steve's having to restart. There he is. There he is. He had to restart his computer. Can you hear me now, Steve? Yes. A lot of glare. Oh, good, good. But uh, yeah, I had to switch this over. When you left, I, <coughs> sudden, I filled out the screen and probably horrified our viewers at home. And uh, I apologize for that. But uh, well, you, and you know, Jay Gary is is right. Um, yeah, yeah. Let me bring that up. Yeah, um, Jay Gary says. Uh, yeah, and, and it's right. And um, if you please. look, you know. It's one thing to say, okay, you know, how should I say it? The people that believe in the paranormal world uh, stuff, a lot of them are pretty arrogant about it. Yeah. You know, they will turn around <coughs> and say, well, I know all about the Bigfoot stuff. And then they'll proceed to tell you all about this paranormal experience. <laughs> <coughs> Um, hey, uh, and then, and then uh, there will be the first ones that'll try to tell you you're wrong. Um, can we switch this up where I, you know I, I don't feel comfortable with being over you? <laughs> no, that's better. That's better. I feel much better. Now. Steve, <laughs> no, no, Steve, you got top billing, bud. There you go. There you go. Um, you know, I you know, like I, I was telling everybody in chat and all the listeners, you know, I don't mind paranormal stuff. I like watching it. The UFO stuff, I watch that. I enjoy it. I love good mystery. I'm sure everybody right, else right. does. But right. uh, you know, when you start tying all the mysteries together, you know, what do you got? Okay, Bigfoot, right. you know, arrives on a UFO. He's actually a demon yep. and riding on the back of the Loch Ness monster. Come on. And you know, I um I used to love um 
if you ever watch Law and Order, the late Richard Belzer, Detective Munch, he always believed in conspiracy theories, right? Mm -hmm. Did you know in real life, Richard Belzer was very much involved in conspiracy theories and then looking at them? No, did not know that. Um, he actually wrote a book on the Kennedy assassination. Wow. Right. And somebody started asking him about this and asking him about that. And he goes, wait, 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 wait. He goes, I don't believe there's anything that will wrap all these mysteries into one thing. You know, and he goes, in the case of like government conspiracy stuff, I believe there's banking interest. I believe there's oil interests. And I believe, you know, maybe there's military industrial interests. Right. And they all don't conspire to create every single thing wrong going on out there. Sometimes they do merge when they have a common denominator, like they have a common enemy. He goes, but they're doing their little thing. They're doing their little thing. They're doing their little thing. Let's not get all confused. And, uh, yeah, don't forget the fired out orbs too. Orbs, yeah. yeah. But you know that is a legitimate uh, thing. Like orbs. Now, now let me let me explain a couple of things. Uh, when I was doing paranormal investigation. I know, I don't think maybe but once I truly thought I caught an orb on a on a on a rolling video. Most of it was dust. We'd sit there and go, nope, dust. Nope, right. dust. Nope, that's dust. You can see, oh yeah, but it's going, it's going horizontal. Well, yeah, that's because the heating duct is over there. We make notes right. and we take diagrams of in the house. And that was a lot of things we would do. We would measure EMF, we would go around, make notations of where the electrical panels were. Where the if the house had forced air, where the heating vents were, because if we put a camera near a forced heating vent, and you see what looks like orbs going past the camera. We would know that it was dust. Dust, right, right. So well, you yeah. know the kind of orbs that I was thinking of. What you know, of course, I know what dust particulates look like when they're close uh, at night with a camera. But I was talking about like ball, literal balls of light, right? Uh, faint balls of light that actually move around and stuff. And usually at night and mm -hmm. these are well documented. I've seen them myself. Yep. Uh, they're, they're really famous for Mar in Martha, Texas. Yep. Uh, you can go see and, the Mar Martha and, and Minnesota. There's a set of lights out, I believe mm -hmm. out in Minnesota as well, or maybe it was Michigan. <laughs> now those happen here in Kentucky too, right. down on the river. Uh, and coincidentally, those happen near oil fields, oil wells down on the river. So there's, yeah. there's some, uh, so even when I was a paranormal <laughs> investigator, I, you know, I was very clear that there was nothing paranormal about Bigfoot whatsoever. Say, you know, it's a flesh and blood thing. It's been reported for, for many, many years. People who interacted with them or saw them, I should say, mm -hmm. reported them as flesh and blood, nothing abnormal. Did right. you ever hear Roger Patterson say anything abnormal? For God's sakes, we got it on, on film. Uh, if you believe in the Freeman, we got it again. Yeah. Um, I, absolutely it. right. Yeah, I, I listened to that same presentation, Mick, about uh, Richard Belzer doing uh, doing the very uh, and that was when he somebody had asked him in the in, in the end, and that's uh, in that particular symposium. I think it was to the National Press Club, and he talked about a book he had written about the, the Kennedy assassination. And uh, very well versed, very smart, uh, but not like kooky. Um, you know, uh, you have to take everything for for what it's worth, and you have to break things down a little bit. Um, you know, there's the story of Tom Messick. Tom Messick is a guy who disappeared at Lily Pond <laughs> up in Warren County, New York, <clears throat> and he was featured on. Missing 411. Yes. And uh, there were so many things about that. I don't really want to break into detail. And if you watch Missing 411, it was, it was another story about a guy who went missing in Colorado. Right. And they found his shoes, and then they found some of his backpack, and then they found his clothing. And, well, why? Why would he take his clothes off? What happened to him, right? Yeah. In actuality, many hypothermia patients get the sensation that they're burning up. 
So they before start you freeze up. to death, right? Before right. you freeze to death, your body feels like you're burning up. Because that's what happens when the nerves freeze. They begin to burn. That's why if you ever come in uh, from the extreme cold and your fingertips start to hurt because you got them way too cold and now they're coming back down the temperature. Yeah. Everybody that's ever played Thank in you, the Mick. snow has had that, right. that experience. Right. So as an investigator, I'd be like, there's nothing unusual about that. The, the guy, it's a very sad case of hypothermia. You know, as far as the whole Tom Messick case, yeah, Lily Pond in that area is a Bigfoot hotspot. But there was no evidence there whatsoever other than the fact they couldn't find him. Right. They couldn't find his rifle either. Yeah, um, yeah that was uh, that was kind of odd, that, that case. Right. And, 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 and Jay, I I agree with you in a lot of that uh, in a lot of that statement. Even um, if you considered that the elderly man may have been a victim of foul play, I mean he was armed with a deer rifle. Right. Uh, and you know what's more likely that happened? He got off trail. It was winter time. Huh? Surprise! It's another winter. Right. Right. He got off trail. Got completely turned backwards. Got lost and probably died of hypothermia. And for whatever reason, they can't find his body. Right. Happens. Yeah. And I'll tell you uh, what. Da, da, not Datkoff, Datloff Pass. I'm you know, a lot the, of, uh, uh, I, I notice uh, Mick mentions Datloff Pass. Now, I did a special show on Datloff Pass yeah. many, a few years back. Yeah. And a lot of people are showing that Bigfoot picture around. Oh, look, there was that Bigfoot, that Bigfoot picture that they, they caught. What was that? That was a picture made up for that mockumentary. That's what that was. People don't remember it that. Lie. It was a lie. It was a lie. That was a picture that was never taken by any of them. It wasn't found on their cameras. They got me. It was it was made up for that mockumentary. They got me when I when I first turned it on. I started watching that, and they showed that image. I was like, oh. <laughs> they got me. But, you know uh, what didn't you know what didn't get me? Mm. <laughs> when they start having these scientists come on. And they're scripted like Hollywood. And I'm like, no, scientists don't talk like that. Yeah. Yeah. Have you ever listened to John Moynensky, Kathy right. Strain, uh, Jeff Meldrum, Dr. John Bindernagel, Dr. Grover Krantz, Dr. Leroy Fish, Dr. Henner Farenbach, Dr. Esteban Sarmentio, which I've listened to all these guys at length right. over the years. Right. Uh, e even in the earlier days, Dr. Matt Johnson. Uh, if you listen to them back in, you know, in their prime, you, you understand that these guys are saying this stuff on this TV. that makes no sense. Felt like it was been well-practiced and rehearsed rather than a uh, live stream of consciousness, you know, discussion. going on. Right. Right. And uh, I'm like, why, why? So the minute what I did was, is I pulled my phone out during the show and I Googled the name of the professor said, oh, we learned at this university. I started Googling it. There's no references. And then I'm scrolling and scrolling. And all of a sudden, it comes up to an, uh, you know, it's a character. In, character in a, right. Right. So then you're like, ah, I get it. And they did. Not only did they do the Datloff Pass phony, they did a Bigfoot Captured phony, which they really skunk people because they suckered Jeff Meldron into get, giving an interview for that show. Yeah, and he, but he did come out and say, "Hey, look, you know, he was duped into that. Right, he did not know where they were yeah, going with right, this, right? Which you know um, easily." So not only did they do the Datlaw Pass special, they did the Megalodon, they did the um, the Mermaid special, and they oh, did the, the same ones that did the Mermaid thing. Yeah, and okay. they did the Bigfoot Capture special. So they did well, this yeah, whole, the Bigfoot whole. Capture one. Man, I was getting phone calls. Okay, from my yeah. relatives. Hey, yeah. they got him. They got him. Uh, what? <laughs> so, oh, Steve, man. I Look. saw that. Yeah, I heard the bird. So the bird warns me. Okay. So anyway, folks, uh, we are going to be back Sunday night. Our guest Sunday night will be our good friend from Pine Island for research. And uh, we will be having that show Sunday night, 9 p.m. Uh, anyway. I tomorrow, hopefully, uh, I'm, I'm set for the uh, set for the weekend because I made a huge pot of meatballs and sauce with sausage too, and I made a big, big uh, you know two gallon pot of that. 
we got stuff for spaghetti. We got stuff for meatball subs. We got all kinds of stuff. Yeah. So that's what I'm doing. But you know what? You're already in spring, Chris. You don't have to hunker down. I have to hunker down tomorrow. <laughs> but anyway, folks, we'll be uh, catching you all. Uh, well, hang on one second. Let me just. Uh, uh, anyway. Uh, we will catch everybody here on um, Sunday night, 9 p.m. Night. Eastern. Sorry, I'm a little uh, little bit off tonight. So, uh, Mac is crank in the sound one for cocktail. So, all right, folks. Uh, everybody be safe. Catch you in a couple of days. Peace out. <laughs>